Hello and welcome to the Bosra MSA GT3 Championship. Round 8 comes from Monza. This week was a bit of an odd one. We uh, released uh, Le Mans, or Le Mans got released at the same time as we were scheduled to start, so uh, a few people couldn't get in due to server issues. So we've got a bit of a shorter grid this week. Over to uh, co-commentator Simon to take you through the grid. Yes, hello. And we start with uh, Craig Parts heading the grid as usual on row one with Ben Haxton at the side of him in his Mercedes uh, racing for Seagate. Second row, we have Barry Bard and Jason Dilworth, both very confident in one in an Audi, one in a BMW. Third row, we have Stephen Schultz, the newcomer to uh, Bosra, and myself, Simon Underhill, in sixth. Uh, fourth row, Alan McCain and Neil Bamber, both in BMWs. And behind them, we have Matty Van Delden and Taylor Lane in ninth and tenth. Row 6 is Martin Glenicky and Ryan Walker. 13 and 14th is Pete and Lee. And then we're back to the back of the grid now. And oh, hold on a minute, Simon Jackson, 11 minutes 50. Now, I knew he was slow, but I didn't think he was that slow. I think that's a typo. 1 minute 50 for Simon Jackson. Marion Bradshaw, uh, Jan Malesva. And then at the back of the grid, we have Dan Bailey setting a time of 151. And um, Paul, Mar uh, Paul Martin just at the back in 20th. And like Jason said earlier, just a slightly shorter grid this week um, due to connection issues and the releases that iRacing made with the new cars and Le Mans. Yeah, that's definitely, so, yeah it's definitely something I think that uh, we're going to work on for next year's schedule, but this is how it was for now and I'm sure there'll be an exciting race ahead of us. Follow us on all these uh, social platforms, Facebook, Twitter and of course YouTube. Subscribe to the channel to get all of these updates as and when they come out. But without further ado, let's get onto the start line and see who makes a good start it's going to be an exciting one looks like Ben gets a great start Stephen does not lose his place to yourself uh, straight away and then is that Alan McCain making a bit of a stormer as well this first corner is always an absolute nightmare I find in GT3s yeah the, the, the crowd of cars you see there it, it, it's unbelievable that we didn't have as, mo as many accidents actually than, than we actually did yeah, yeah I, think, fact, I think actually a lot of people got to do quite cleanly. Yeah, Very I think only Marion there having a bit of a spin, but um, everyone else getting through cleanly, which is a bit of a miracle for Monza GT3 action. So here we go, everyone through relatively cleanly, see how it's all shaken out. So we've got uh, Craig. Craig on the inside here, Ben Ackerson doing a manoeuvre into the first chicane. Yeah. Second chicane, sorry. This second chicane I find really slippery, in, uh, especially in early laps when you're concentrating on keeping in front of whoever you're in front of at the time. Here we are on board with uh, Marion, who I think has a bit of a spin into the first chicane, but was there any contact? A bit of a slow getaway. I don't think there was. I think he just might have dropped it on the grass, Jason. Uh, and, and with that under braking, loses the back end and just slides across the track. I'm not yeah. sure. Oh, yeah, there was a bit of a contact. We think that might have been um, Mr. Woodhouse that uh, just tapped him at the back end. Yeah, I think that was already lost, as you say. Braked a bit late and then uh, tried to avoid, which is a great move, um, but touched the grass and couldn't save it from there. And then a uh, bit of... Uh, interesting attack from myself on Barry uh, into that chicane and oh Ben's ben lost it. it wrong. Yeah so Ben one of our forefront, forefront uh, leaders of this race unfortunately just got a bit wide uh, coming out of that corner into the barriers. It looks like it can still continue but he's a bit of a, a wobble on which suggests he's got a bit of damage and might have to pit it for a, a quick repair. Yeah he's definitely going to have to take some repairs there I'm sure and uh, that was unfortunate it's a high speed section and just as soon as you lose it there, you're thrown out into that outside barrier. Well, we're continuing on. It's continued. I did not expect that. I was expecting a bit of a fast repair. That looked like a very bent car. But anyway, here's uh, is that Neil Bamber going around the outside yep. of you. Yeah. Good yeah, clean manoeuvre. Yeah. 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 Alan McCain as well, trying to make the move. But myself um, and Neil had a fantastic race this race. We were really close all the way through. Uh, we didn't contact once. It was really respectful drive between myself and Neil, and I really appreciated it at the end of the race. There's some great racing right from the off here. Uh, we've got Taylor taking it a bit of a shortcut across the grass there, letting what that's three, four, five cars through. Yeah, he will have had a slowdown for that, so he'd probably just slow down to take his penalty and letting the other three clean, which, again, a respectable driving from, from Taylor there. Yeah, here's some of that battling that you were talking about with Neil right up the back of that car. Loving the fact that we're switching views there to see just how close these two BMWs are. Getting oh, get a great run. Close, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is close. I don't know how, how, I, don't know how I didn't touch them and, and accidentally knock him off, but we didn't. 
and it carried on. We can pretend it was completely meant as well, but good stuff. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Neil defending well, but he's going to leave you a lot of room, I'm assuming. Oh, well done, both of you. And Neil just gets it slightly wide onto the ground, which allows me to get the position back and fight for the next corner. This is the sort of racing that we're looking forward to in Bosra. Um, more and more as it goes on and everyone gets used to each other's driving styles dragging all the way down this long straight to the second chicane and you've got the inside line for it and it get the move done under the braking so that's great and a good gaggle of four cars there as well and here we, we have Marion Bradshaw just uh, collecting himself together and trying to gain some positions back from the ones he lost from the first spin in the beginning of the race just passing Dan Bailey in the BMW and cleanly going around the last corner before he goes on to start from the straight foot. But well, slightly wider, Dan Bailey tries to get back up to the inside. Doesn't unfortunately make manoeuvre, and I think he might just slip behind Marion to get, gain a toe. Gold wheels oh, on that as well. Oh dear, look who's spinning yeah, around. <laughs> you don't like to do a race without a little spin, though. Like I said, that second chicane, very slippery. Not your uh, not your fault. No, but it's really, like you say, really hard to get the traction there down on that. Oh, and then is that... Lee Bunker, is that that? Uh, yeah, did you touch? I had, yeah, I think we had slight contact there where I was trying to get the inside line to that corner. As you can see from this angle here, yeah. Lee went slightly wide. I managed to get on the power again. I got the right up to the, on the right hand side of Lee, went for the inside line, and we just clipped. Yeah. It's just accidental there. Oh, that was close with Martin though on the way through and Taylor. Oh, and a little touch from Jacko there as well, I think, so he's got touched twice. Anyway, back with the leader, Craig, not pulling away massively at this point in time. Barry sticking with him in what should have been the dominant car here, I think, the Audi. And uh, you can see Stephen catching right back up with this group as well. So some close battles throughout, including the uh, Hill Bamba gaggle back in the distance as well. Yeah, Taylor just hitting the curbs there, unfortunately unsettling the car meant that he took the spin. I don't like he's hit anybody, waiting for people to come past, do the right thing, spinning it around and carrying on. Yeah, very, very intelligent driving there, so that's great. Now we've got Alan with a run down the main straight on the back of Neil. This is a great place to uh, get some overtaking done in the draft in similarly quick cars. Obviously these are very similar, they're the same car. And the Motorsport Auctions car Goes past the uh, Seagate car. Yeah, you got Mike Van Dels just behind as well in the uh, partner Motorsport Auctions car, trying to make the same manoeuvre on Neil. Uh, and then behind him, we have Ben Ackerson in the uh, Mercedes. Yeah, so at this point in time, you've got uh, Craig, Barry, and myself in first, second, and third. Barry's going for the move using that Audi top speed to try and get the manoeuvre done into the first corner. Gets past nice and clean. Does he hold it on the outside? He does, yes. So now his, uh, his plan will be to pull away and get out of that, get Craig out of that draft. More. Here we see Neil Bamber again up, up inside of the Alan McKay. Alan McKay now just got Matty Van Delden upside uh, of him. Uh, teammates un... taking each other out. What we said before, first rule first of racing. Rule. Oh, I can't imagine uh, how bad that's feeling. Um, I know that me, uh, Barry and Tony have been very close a lot of the time. I don't think we've had any touches yet, but it's something that plays on my mind all the time, so I'm sure that neither of them will have felt particularly great about that. Anyway, back on board with Barry. Craig trying to come back past and does so into this first corner. It's a complete drag race down to there. If you get a good, um, good exit from the last corner, you're going to get a great toe and make the move into turn one. Yeah, on board with Lee Bunker now, just following Taylor Lane into the, the last chicane before the back straight. Yes, slightly different, well, slightly offline here, oh. or slightly quite offline here. Unfortunately, again, set, unsettled the car and into the barrier and some damage. Not sure if Lee's taken a pit stop here, but I would imagine so with that damage. Yeah, those, those sausage curbs are basically ramps, so there we go. Um, where are we? We're lap nine at the moment. Nearly 20 minutes gone in this race, and it's all shaking out a little bit it's been pretty damn exciting the whole way through so far so we we're on board with oh matty oh, van delden and simon jackson just tapping the back end and spinning him around i think that was i know that the the, the the mercedes drivers are complaining of the uh, braking of the car with it being so heavy and i think that's just a prime example of not being on the brakes soon enough and hard enough to avoid the contact 
that's the thing. Unfortunately, you got to know your car, and yeah, I'm not saying it. Oh, Barry. Barry spin. Round. Uh, there we Apparently go. That's put money on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every single race, uh, unfortunately. Well, I don't know whether it's every single race, but I know that he's uh, he's kicking himself a lot at the moment for consistency. So I know that's something he's working on. I'm sure he'll get there. Yeah, he's such a quick driver as well, Barry. He just needs to stop spinning, and he, he does so well. Exactly. So uh, Craig popping into the pits here. This is lap ten. Now I know that he'd uh, stuck qualifying pressures into his tyres. Uh, I don't know whether that's why he took this early stop, but um, I was definitely scratching my head at that point, see whether he could get to the end of the race on that pit stop, but we'll see how that pans out. We've got Taylor Lane making the moves, this turn one move that everyone's loving uh, on Martin Galenicki in the Bowden Solutions car. Nice and clean again. Lots of clean overtaking happening in this race, Simon. Yes, there is, yes. Like I say, there were some really good battles between a number of people on this race. A lot of people congratulating people for being so clean and respective of each other. We just see uh, Paul Bedford, he, he, he spins. Is it Phil or Paul? He just spins and doesn't look like he's hit anything. Again, just takes his time, spins it round, gets out of the way and carries on. Gives us a nice look at uh, another good livery from uh, a privateer as well, though. So we, there, there's the positive from that spin. And it's Phil Bedford. Sorry, Phil. <laughs> Well, at least you've noticed during the uh, the roundup this time. Uh, so, where are we? We're Neil Bamber and yourself again. And it looks like you've got the run, but siding for the outside this time, which gives you the inside for the second half of this chicane. Yeah, Can always work. just um, in the back of my mind, Neil. You know, obviously trying to outbreak me, but he doesn't. He, he lets me have the, the position, knowing that he'll probably get the run out of me somewhere else. Yeah, it's all about patience in these races. We know we're just over halfway through this race at the moment very difficult to remember that while you're in the car driving along but uh, you know, Mark Woodhouse in the McLaren this is one of the cars that I would, would have expected to do well in, in Monza I mean he's up to seventh um, but it's one of the faster cars of the GT3 and with Monza being in a lot of straights I would have thought he might be up there at the front oh I don't know I mean it, that's a really good position for him um, yeah, I'm sure he won't mind me saying that that's that looks like the best position we've seen him in so far this season so hopefully the car helping him out a little bit there Anyway, on board with uh, Brian Walker and Martin Galenicki. Martin trying this run down to the last corner, is it? To the last corner? Yep. To the Perotada. Gets it done under braking. But then you've got to be really careful making that move that you get a good exit. You don't run too wide as yeah. well. Although yeah. Although... I, I think I did a couple of times, ran too wide on the artificial grass there, and you just get a bit of a snake on when do, with under traction. It's... Um, yeah, it's a bit of a corner you need to watch for speed. Yeah, but he's uh, managed to get himself back in the toe after giving the place back. And he's going to have a go at a carbon copy of the move you've just done. But he's not quite as close under braking. So, Brian holds on to the position very well. Good defending there in the 56 car. On board with Craig Parks. Yeah, just uh, behind Martin Woodhouse. Mark Woodhouse, sorry, I'm going to get it all wrong this week. <laughs> uh, just looking to looking to uh, get the move on him and, and try and get some positions back up to the front of the grid and, and catch yourself. And, and I think it was Stephen who was we leading the race at this point. Yeah, uh, I think he must have taken other tyres or, or something at this point. I can't remember what was happening uh, for him at this point in the race, but that was an early stop. I'm assuming he has to stop again at some point, or he's on a massive fuel-saving run at the moment. Anyway, Back with some more uh, screen time for Jacko in a great uh, battle with Jan Blaziva. And uh, both of them going well at this point, despite Simon's little tap earlier on. 13th and 14th. Yeah, just been a bit conservative around that corner. That's a corner you can probably run uh, quite high on the inside curb there to, to get a good run down this straight it's, um, he's just been a little bit conservative there but now he's we can see why now because he was under attack yeah he was defending Alan McCain there so yeah all play, fair play to him Alan stuck it up the inside that's a, a great move it's a tough place to overtake into that last chicane it is, it is and, but then you've got you know, you get, get out put the traction out of that corner you've got a great toe if you're following somebody down his back straight to make up another few places around the last bend and then down the start and finish straight. Yeah, that's it. And we've got so oh, Yang going a little bit wide out of this last Alan corner. Alan taking a fantastic line yeah. out of that last corner. Then that was uh, a crazy amount of grip he had there. You can see 
Um, on the bottom right of the screen, the stint length, and he's had a few more laps than the tyres. So, oh, did say, oh, here we go. Steven. This was a great battle. I mean, I've been wondering about how we were going to com commentate on this because you don't want to talk about yourself too much, but this was the best race of the season so far, just from a pure excitement level for me. We were exchanging positions at least once a lap, pretty much. Got to hand it to Steve, first race in, and we had some really good clean racing. Yeah, you can just see how how professional you've both been, um, you know, not hitting each other, giving each other room, and here you see Stephen trying to make the move upon you uh, on the first chicane, a bit similar to what you just done, unfortunately, or is it fortunately? Oh yeah, you just get a good line into the first part of the chicane, you get the inside line. Looks like you struggled on traction, which allowed Stephen then just to gain a position as first. Yeah, at this point it's similar to what we were saying earlier, 20 minutes to go, just trying not to have a collision and it'll happen somewhere later on this drag track, so um, great battle between these guys though, so Martin Galenicki and Mark Woodhouse, 9th and 10th, both doing brilliantly, Mark's going to have a Van go. Van yep, Matty Van Delden there as well. Yeah, absolutely, so you've got uh, Bowden Solutions car, is that privateer, Mr. Woodhouse, and then uh, Matty Van Delden in a motorsport auctions car. All tussling really well. A uh, little tap, just as we say it. No malice intended, I'm sure, but um, uh, I'm sure both were very disappointed with that situation. Yeah, Mar Marion Bradshaw in a 56 Mercedes just got it on the curve slightly um, damaged in, in the barrier, but managing to carry on by lots of things. Yeah, and then uh, as you can see, uh, myself and Stephen coming through there as well. I remember seeing that and uh, hoping that that car was in one piece enough to go straight. Anyway, we've got uh, Alan McCain and Taylor, Taylor Lane, Lane again. Yeah, <laughs> Alan's loving that last uh, chicane, isn't he, for some overtaking and does another great move through there. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Taylor Lane would have got the toe on Alan there down that straight. On board now with Martin McClendicke into the first chicane behind Marty Van Delden. So, the, as I say, previous lap they had a bit of a touch. Martin Glenicky taking the line. Oh, it looks like Marty Van Delden may have a slowdown because Martin Glenicky is getting a right good toe. Or, you know, it looks like he's going to select to reverse Marty Van Delden there. The <laughs> yeah. speed that he closed up on him. Yeah, it must have been a slowdown. Here we go again. Another first corner. Oh, oh, wait, oh where did you hear from? <laughs> <laughs> we were having a few conversations over the uh, radio on this about how good this BMW is on the brakes, although clearly I'd overshot a little bit, otherwise I'd have got a better run out of there. This Audi so fast in a, in a drag race, though. Uh, so, it, this was the well, a lot of people say it doesn't ride the, the curves well, but a lot of, you know, Barry Bard and, and Stephen showing that, you know, when Tony Bard is here, showing that the Audi can be set up correctly and, and really be a good front runner car to, to do the races in. Yeah, he's taken a lot of curb there. This, I don't know how Stephen was, I'd like to ask him, but, um, this was a massive tactical game by this point. There was nothing in it pace-wise, so we were just trying to work out where we'd pass so that you could get across the finish line first. We'll see how that pans out. But this battles all the way through the field. Uh, we've got uh, who are we with yeah. here? It was Neil, and Neil. Now you now with Ben Ackerson and Neil. And this is near the, the, the end of the race, Jason. So you can see three minutes to go. Ben Ackerson just trying to make the move on Neil Bamber. Neil Bamber just tapping his teammate. Again, teammates tapping, not the right thing to do. But, you know, Neil well, letting Ben take the uh, Neil letting Ben take the position. Yeah, I mean there was a little bit more. Oh, that's ended quite abruptly. Anyway, as you can see on the timings, Stephen did take the win. Uh, he managed to beat me tactically there, and it, but you can see how small the margin was. It was a real close ending. Shame we didn't get to see that. Uh, followed by uh, Barry Bard and Ben Hackerson. And the rest of the results you'll have to rewind it for. Um, as you can see, 20 runners, uh, or the 19 took part, uh, as Paul didn't manage to take the start. But what an exciting race, Simon. How good was that? It, it was a brilliant race, and it's just, just such a shame. We had the, the uh, issues at the very beginning of the race where people couldn't connect, because it could have been even better. It was a really, really good race. A lot of cl close racing, and some real respective driving from all drivers out there this week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, decent changes in the driver standings on that. You know, we won't dwell on that too much for the for the people that weren't able to make it. It's a real shame for them. But there are drop weeks involved in this championship, so uh, no doubt everyone will 
have a lot more fun as things go on. Uh, Acorn Printing leading the team standings there. I think they uh, increased their lead just a little um, during that race, so that was good to see for them. Seagate closely following though still. Motorsport Auctions and Bowling Solutions behind with uh, 56 and Synology bringing up the rear of the team standings. But yep, that was uh, a better race than I expected from Monza. I expected more gaps and not as close fighting so I was pleasantly surprised by that uh, definitely I would say the best race of the season so far but there we go next round is from Brands Hatch it's round 9 Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit one I myself am really looking forward to hope uh, that you are as well Simon yep yeah, I am and I'll hopefully see everybody there next week absolutely thanks for watching